Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from wherever you are watching this channel depending on your time zone. Now yesterday, the Kitui governor Mamachari Tingilu decided to plant a sense of direction among Kenyans during this campaign season on one of her posts that she made on her Facebook page. And if you allow me, this is what she posted, if you allow me to read. If you can tear gas school children just to steal piece of land that belong to Langata Primary School for your parking space for your hotel that is built on grabbed land. What can't you do? Kenyans need a leader, not a dealer. That is Mama Chari Tingilu talking to Kenyans. And this post attracted more than 400 people who shared that information out. And it has also attracted more than 13,000 comments. Now, for those who don't understand what Charitingil is talking about, this is exactly what she's saying. Why did they not take the necessary? This is public land and it belongs to the school. It must be given back to the school. Now we are continuing with our panel and discussion, but I have a quick request. You might be watching this channel, but you have not yet subscribed. So my humble request, please consider subscribing so that another time, once released, a video like this will always get notified. Again, to all our channel subscribers and anyone who drop comment, I must say thank you so much for your unconditional support. Again, I'm requesting you to give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube will recommend a video to more viewers or a wider audience. Back to our discussion. Now, what Charlie Tingle is doing is simply to remind Kenyans about a question that France at all had already posed to them. <laughs> that in whose hands are we safe? So 2022 is here. August is coming. The campaign is going on. Politicians are coming out to give out promises that in one hand can be fulfilled and others you can't even trust if really they are going to fulfill those promises. So the question remains that in whose hands are we safe? Who among these people that might be on ballot to seek for the presidents, can you trust what they are telling you? Some of them, we have tested them. You have seen what they can do. It is clear in, day broad, in broad daylight what these politicians have passed. So in one hand, you have Azmiya Laumoja. In the other hand, you have Hasla Nation. And in between, we have a team by the name Oka, which is still lost. <laughs> because I want to run and pack a size. So, Tartingilu is asking Kenyans to make an informed decision. Whether they are going to vote for Azmio, Baba has been tested, you know what he can do. We have the Hasla Nation, UDA part led by Dr. William Samoy Ruto, the Deputy President, and She's trying to tell them what William Samoy Ruto has done. So that when you are going to vote, you are an informed voter. That electorate is already informed when they are going to vote so that they don't complain any other time. Are you going to vote for someone who has been seen tear-gassing primary school kids? In fact, if I look at these kids, some of them are um, lower class children. These are children who are five years, six years, seven years, nine years. But Ruto did not care when they were being tear gas for that piece of land. And another thing she's trying to communicate here, because she's mentioning about the grabbed land. So she's simply telling Kenyans, in one hand, we have a leader who has a reputation in grabbing land or owning a grabbed land and in other hand we have a leader who have fought against those people who have been stealing 
government resources. And all of these two are on ballot. So as we go forward, make an informed decision so that you don't complain in the near future after the next government has been formed. So Charity Ngilu is simply campaigning for Azimio Laumoja. And she's really doing it very nicely by reminding Kenyans of their past things that happened in a government that was formed where William Ruto was a deputy president, a principal advisor to President Uhuru Kenyatta. So Ruto has come out as a hustler, a person who is representing the poor of the poorest in the country. The people he has referred to as Mamamboga, Watu Mkokoteni, <laughs> small scale traders, those are the people that Ruto want to, present, to represent going forward. But Charity Ngilu is also posing a question on him. That in as much he wants to represent the poor of the poorest, the question is, he has been seen tear-gassing the children of the poor of the poorest. Because those children who go to Langata Primary School, these are the children of the Mamamboga, the poor of the poorest people, they who cannot afford good private school so that they can pay for their own children. Those are the children in this video who are being tear gassed by police. And where the, were these police getting order? And in whose land were these children being tear gassed? Who was trying to take that land? That is the question here. So in one way, I think this is working in the interest of Raila Molo Dinga. Because those people who are defending this land, obvious they were in the side of Raila Molodinga. And you see when the president came and talked about the same issue. The other time when we were having the Madaraka Day, Raila reminded Kenyans about the Uhuru Garden, which was being developed, who was trying to grab it, and the hotel near that property, the owner of that hotel and that land. So all of these things are going to continuously play. And uh, William Ruto's side should prepare because people are going to dig deeper into their past things that they have done in the country and they are going to use it to decampaign them. So if they are not prepared very well to look on Raila Amolo Dinga's side, try to dig deeper on what things Raila failed to do it properly. <laughs> and in my view, really, I don't see what you can try to dig from Raila Amolo Dinga and bring so that you can decampaign Raila using those things. But if you look on the hustler side, there are so many things you can talk about them. There are so many things you can bring out and use it as a tool to decampaign William Samuel Ruto. Talk about even the issue of Madodo and other things. There are videos if you bring out, those people who support Raila, William Samuel Ruto cannot be happy about you if you talk about them. But that is the history. It is already written. How was the foot of mat? Because those are the real things people who are supporting William Samai Ruto, including the deputy president himself, have talked about them. And when you bring them out, it's a good platform that can help us Mio, to decampaign the DP. So these videos are everywhere, and the people are going to use them. Ruto should look just for another way, maybe to try and defend himself. If you talk about promises. If we have a leader who has really tried to give promises in the country which have never been fulfilled, even through the Jubilee government, it was the deputy president. The president was there when Ruto was articulating about Jubilee agenda in six months' time, the number of stadiums, the number of projects that were being, that were being propelled to be done in that short period were never implemented. But instead, when they failed, the DP went ahead even to defend the corrupt scandal that were happening in those things, including the Aurora and Kimarol Dam issue, where Raila was talking about the 7 billion shilling, and the DP responded as if 7 billion was a change for Mandaz. So you can see, all those issues are good, and it can work the interest of Azimio Laumoja. So in as much campaign will be going on during this year going forward. The Azimio side has so many things to question about William Samay Ruto. And again, they have enough time to sell their agenda to Kenyans. 
But I see William Samiru Tosaidi using most of their time to defend themselves during this time. Because when something like this one come out, they now need to go and look for a way to defend themselves or bring another topic that will silence this topic. So most of the time, William Samir Ruto said, I see they will be using their golden time to defend themselves rather than having enough time to sell their agenda to Kenyans. Because even the kind of agenda they want to sell, they have a reputation of giving promises that have never been fulfilled. So in as much they want to give promises, they still need again time to defend what they did not fulfill. So you see how this politics is going to play out. And I see the biggest winner here is Azmio. They have nothing to be afraid about, they have nothing to defend, but they have enough time to sell their agenda and manifesto to Kenyans. But the hustler side, they have so many things they need to defend themselves about, they have so many things they need to explain themselves properly to Kenyans so that maybe they can be trusted as we go forward. Now I don't know what you think about this, but that's my view. Let us meet in the comment section where we can have a continuation of this conversation. <laughs> you don't necessarily to agree with me, you can disagree, but constructive. So that we help other people to understand this discussion even much more better. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening to me up to this far. May good God bless you and see you in our next video.